2K has been notoriously quiet about what exactly their attributes do and what their numbers really mean. So NBA 2K Labs was started with the goal of shedding a little more light on these subjects so that gamers can have every advantage available to them to dominate online play. And after months of research, we bring to you their top five little known advantages that you could give yourself in NBA 2K17. Let's get it. Coming in at number five is plus ones. Most 2K players will agree that 95 is the player rating cap for all non-superstar players and 96 is the cap for players at the superstar one rating. However, this is not the case. Players who max every plus one attribute that can be earned by going to practice have the ability to get to 96 overall before superstar one and 97 overall as a superstar one. There are nine different attributes you will need to max to get to this next level. Free throws, play the free throw gold game in team practices. Players can only earn one free throw attribute per team practice. Different positions cap, different levels. Reaction time, due to Gatorade reaction time drill in the weight room. You can fail the drill and still get plus one each time, but only once per practice. The minimum amount of effort to still receive gold doing work is get at least six on the first half of the drill and zero on the second. This is the quickest way to complete this drill. Offensive consistency, I'll go into further detail on this in a moment but you can only do this drill every other team practice. And it only gives you plus one every other attempt. This one is a grind, but worth it. Draw foul, shot IQ, intangibles, and hands. You earn these by doing the task in practice. You can start the drill and cancel it to earn the plus one. It takes three tasks to earn one of the attributes. They're still looking into what shot IQ and intangibles do exactly, but have a little information on hands and draw foul. Draw foul is not a simp stat. You will get more calls the higher it gets. A player with 40 draw foul will draw a call on 17% of their drives. And when he has 99 draw foul, his rate increases all the way up to 35.5%. While this is not crucial for Park, program players should take advantage of draw foul to earn some free points at the line. This is a huge increase making it worth it to max. And the hand stat will help you to catch passes cleanly and not fumble them and will reduce the frequency of rebounds bouncing off your hand, which we all know can be incredibly frustrating. Lastly, stamina and hustle. You earn these two by doing the workouts in the weight room. You will get one of them for every fifth workout you complete. Increased stamina will let you sprint for a longer period of time and it will help replenish your stamina bar more quickly. Hustle will help you with recovering loose balls and rebounding. If you grind all of these stats to 99, you will see subtle improvements in your my player and you will hit that next overall rating. Coming in fourth is strength. One of the more popular questions is, is strength worth upgrading? And the answer is yes. So what does strength help with besides make your guy stronger? The largest quantifiable increase was in made dunks and layups. For testing strength, a 6'6 player with slasher attribute caps and Hall of Fame posterizer dunking on the team of 7'3 glass cleans with bronze rim protector was used. Any attempt that resulted in a miss shot due to a foul was thrown out, and here were the results. As you can see, having higher strength greatly helps with the success of dunks and the chance of a shot going in. While it may appear that number of made layups went down, that is only due to the increased frequency of getting layup animations opposed to dunk ones. Strength also has benefits in areas that are more difficult to quantify. Boxing out, strength will help keep your man from slipping past you for the rebound. On the flip side, if you are boxed out, the higher the strength, the better chance you have of doing a swim move to get past your man. Post moves and post defense, it is easier to back your man down or prevent your man from backing you down when you have higher strength. However, strength does not play a role in the success of a post move, except for the drop step. For screens, strength does not help with setting screens, but it does help you run through them. And defense, so far it seems like strength is great for bigs, and it is, but the reason to max strength on your guards is its role on defense. Even if you have the best reaction time, predictive skills in the world, sometimes the input lag will kill you in online modes. If you struggle with staying in front of the more experienced players who are utilizing advanced dribble moves, strength may be the solution to your problem. These dribble moves are often patterns that the users have memorized. Higher amounts of strength will lead to more bump animations against your matchup that will break the dribble chains and make it easier to check your man. We find the most consistently good defense is simply staying in front of your man, not reaching or jumping to try to block shots and getting bumps whenever possible. Third is hot zones. 
Here's our biggest impact advice for anyone wanting to bring their mild player to compete online at a high level. Get a hot zone on every section of the court. Since this is 2K, it has to be a little more complicated than it should be. It doesn't seem to work the same for everyone, but in our experience, hot zones are shared across all your characters. If you make a new mob player, your hot zones on your other mob players may disappear temporarily, but can be regained easily by playing a career game. Why should you get hot zones, you ask, and avoid having cold zones? It will raise your shooting percentage and will get you more greens. Your shooting bar will be bigger in the hot zones as well. With a 9 badge player with an 80 overall standing 3, 2K Lab shot 500 standing and uncontested shots in each of the cold, hot, and normal zones. Here are the results. As you can see, the increase in makes and greens makes it completely worth it to set a hot zone. There are 5 zones on the perimeter, 5 from mid range, 3 around the hoop, and 1 zone under the hoop where you can get hot zones. In order to set a hot zone, you must hit approximately 12 shots in the zone and shoot higher than 40%. If you have a high zone and play several games without hitting in that area, you will lose that high zone. An easy way to set the high zones is just by playing on rookie with 12 minute quarters. It normally only takes around 4 games to set them all as it's easy to hit 60 field goals by shooting 40%. After they are set, just start a career game on another character and they will copy to that character as well. You don't even have to play the full game, you can sim to the end and they will still get the high zone. Number two on the list is intangibles. Another common question is what's the purpose of the intangible rating? There was speculation about the stats simply being a placeholder that would allow the developers at 2K to manipulate overall ratings, typically in my team. There's some evidence to back this up due to the significant effect on overall rating the stat had. The difference between 25 and 99 represents four points to a player's overall rating. However, it has a more significant effect on gameplay. The guys at 2K Labs use two identical players with only their intangible rate and separate them, one at 99 and the other at 25. Turn the game speed all the way to 100 and game lift down to one minute. And it started to take many buzzer beaters as possible. What ended up happening was they found that the player with 99 intangibles made over 30% more buzzer beaters at the end of the quarter and clutch shots at the end of a close game. Also notice players with high intangible were capable of getting different animations at the end of the game to create space. The player attempted quick turnaround jumpers and even craftier tippings around the rim. And the number one thing you did not know about NBA 2K17 is offensive consistency. Offensive consistency is without a doubt the number one request they have received. Clearly this is due to the significant amount of effort involved with raising the rating. This stat also had a bit of a mysterious following with it as many YouTubers have made very large claims about the differences it makes. After a number of different tests trying to break down what this stat does, here's at least a concrete example of at least one of the benefits. For this test, it's important to understand the different levels of hot a player can be. As a player begins to heat up, they will hit an initial hot stage before the red ring below the player is visible. When a player hits that second level of being hot, that is when you see the red ring. The first level of being high was good for a 5 point boost to the following categories. Shot close, all mid range ratings, all 3 point ratings, shot IQ, free throw, layup, standing layup, ball control, all passing attributes, hands, all post attributes, offensive and defensive rebounds, and all defensive attributes. The second level of being high provided a 9 point boost to the same categories. They begin the test with Paul George, defensive consistency rating of 95 and a modified version of him with only the offensive consistency stat of a 40. And tracked how many three point attempts it took to get to each level of being high. With 40 offensive consistency it took George 3 shots to hit the initial heat stage and 4 mates to get to the second level. Compare this to the 95 offensive consistency where George became hot after the first make and hit the second level after the third shot. Next, Paul was able to retain his hot despite missing shots at a higher level. At 40 offensive consistency, as soon as George missed, his level of heat will fail. At 95, George was able to miss 4 shots before the rating fell. They're not completely sure if they solved the offensive consistency rating and think that the same patterns may apply to my team badges, but they haven't been able to prove that further yet. Sorry sports gamers, hope this video was able to help you guys out, shed some light on things you didn't know, and answer some of the questions you guys may have had about 2K for a while. 
Now going over to NBA 2K Lab, there is a link in the descriptions below. These guys, as you can tell from this video, do amazing work for the NBA 2K community. And stay tuned for more NBA 2K17 content to come at Sports Gamers Online. Thank you all for watching and be good y'all.